Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha Conquers Snow, and by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. There's no doubt Arctic Cat and Yamaha made some big waves in the snowmobile industry when three years ago they announced a cooperative engine supply and manufacturing agreement. Snowtracks went on a mission to drill down on this landmark move and get the inside story from the guys who actually made it happen. Yamaha's Peter Smallman II and Arctic Cat's Brad Darling. Clearly, Arctic Cat has North American-based manufacturing expertise and Yamaha has enormous engine building skills centered around their Hamamatsu Japan engine facility. Both companies have inherent strengths and some inherent vulnerability. For sure, this groundbreaking marriage between a domestic and an import OEM had enormous potential to benefit both players. However, as most of us know, marriage can be a tricky dance. So let's have the DTR talk, define the relationship. The relationship between Articat and Yamaha are really two relationships. One is a engine supply agreement uh, from Yamaha to Articat, and then a, a snowmobile manufacturing agreement between Articat and Yamaha. It started uh, back with the supply agreement with the SRX 120, and as the relationship grew, it grew to the Viper, and uh, since then it's been uh, mutually beneficial for both of us. Obviously, this partnership came with significant risk. Managing the risk is a story all on its own. At first, where there was not a lot of concern uh, for the consumer perception because we did start off with the SRX 120. As we moved to the Viper though, um, I think the benefit for the customer is, is we knew that the customer's loyalty to the brands and the perception of their customers of both Articat and Yamaha of our positive attributes that it would be beneficial for the customer in the long run. But going back to the SRX 120, it was nice to get kind of everything out of the place. How we could distribute parts to Yamaha, so Yamaha can send it to their customers. How we could get parts from Yamaha for our engines, so that we can send them to our customers. So we were able to figure everything out on a lot lower volume level with the SRX 120 that led us into the SR Viper. So, are these two companies winning on this deal? I think what we found with this relationship and what we presented to the market, the return for the risk paid off. As everybody knows, Yamaha builds one of the best, if not the best, four-stroke engine. And we had the opportunity to couple that to our chassis and able to share that between the two of us. Then our customers are going to win. Our dealers are going to win. I think it's really a successful venture in the end. Just like marriages have surprises, so do snowmobile manufacturing partnerships. Some of the challenges we had with speed to market and reacting to market, obviously being so far away in Japan, but something that we've learned working together with Articat Together, what we're doing is we're bringing to the market a product quickly that meets all the quality uh, standards that the customers are expecting from us. And we brought two strengths, totally different strengths together, and it's amazing how much now we're accelerating to market and then bringing out better product every year. Our, our quality has been improved since our partnership with Yamaha. I think the key thing is the mutual respect that the two companies and ourselves have for each other, because the bottom line is you have two companies and it goes down to people. And we're a lot of times it's just snowmobilers talking to snowmobilers. Yeah, and, and, and interesting to that is, I always thought it was gonna be more difficult for our engineers. Hmm. You know, engineers are inventors, designers, and that's their baby. So we really brought a strong one team of engineering together as we work on sleds going forward. Sharing information was another unexpected outcome. When Pete and I originally started putting this together, um, I expected a different outcome than where we are today. You know, we, we knew there's gonna be some challenges, but what the outcome we have is better. So it's not a good thing. It's yeah. not a, unexpected as, as I'm saying, is, oh, sorry, we went the wrong way, but we absolutely have got closer together than we were when we started this relationship three plus years ago. Well, the best part of the sharing is we'll talk about a problem in the industry that I can't talk to another competitor about. I can talk to Brad about that. Some of the challenges about creating demand, creating how do we keep customers in the industry. These are conversations that we've had amongst our own people, but you can we can ask Brad, we can ask some of the, uh, the engineering team. At first, 
there was lots of secrets. Like, you know, we, they're competitors and how do we form this relationship? How much do we let we, out? We, and... we, were for, we were living within the contract, but as it uh, flourished, it became stronger and stronger. What, what's really unique about this and, and what I love about this relationship, Pete, is that we're able together to bring certain products to the market that now our competitors can't do. Uh, the industry isn't getting any bigger, as we all know, and there's product that we want to, and it costs millions of dollars to bring new product, but if we can paint it blue and green, we've got the togetherness to bring something that we don't think our competitors can do. Snow Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Lightweight performance. Cooperation and competition seem like unlikely bedfellows. Here's how it's done. It kind of came natural. At first we were worried about that because we were competitors, but it kind of came natural of where we kind of divide the line. As, as prior to the Yamaha relationship and we're ending our relationship with Suzuki Power, um, it's a, a dramatic difference between Suzuki and Yamaha. Suzuki was a great engine supplier for us, but they weren't snowmobilers. The one thing that uh, basically glues this together, it's the four-stroke snowmobile. On the four-stroke side, you know, we're fully cooperative, we're working together, we're developing different uh, chassis, uh, new technologies, we're working together as a team to make a better four-stroke snowmobile. On the two-stroke side, we're still competitors. It's a, it's a different market in itself. To make it happen, Arctic Cat and Yamaha dealers had to buy in or the plan wouldn't work. We, we've talked about uh, having our, our dealers, a Yamaha dealer and Articat dealer is the same dealer. I said that before, that we have them as, as joint dealers and it's interesting enough, again, to go back to brand loyalty. And when we first launched this SR Viper in 7000 in 2014 model year, I remember coming back to our board to present the, the data after March 31st, so after a full season, and both Yamaha and Articat both grew our sales that year. Both of us mutually grew, but the one thing that made the difference is we grew the industry that year. Together, we together grew the industry. we grew the industry. Yeah. That's so a good point. That, that, I think that's that's important. What about Kiss and Tell? Yamaha can see Arctic Cat's inner sanctum, and vice versa. How's that working out? Is this a tricky thing? Um, well, at first we didn't open up all the doors to all the engineering. Everybody, come on in, but. As we started working together much closer, like Brad has been to Japan several times in Yamaha along with his team and his team of engineers. But in a relationship like this, if we're gonna make the best snowmobile, sometimes you have to open up the door a little bit to the technologies of how you make the product better. The secrecy required to launch this kind of cooperative effort was exceptional. In fact, Brad and Pete were worried that Super Tracks and Snow Tracks might have figured it out. I don't know how we kept it so quiet, really don't. When you have this many people from both companies working on this project, I think what, what did help us, you know, by launching the SR120, we were able to get that out there. So, you know, we, we painted our 120 blue, that able to get us out so that Pete and I could be seen at dealer shows together and there wouldn't be a bunch of rumors. And you could talk about engines. And there's a lot of excitement and we knew that this was gonna have a profound effect on the industry. But just bringing you on the inside, Mark, we had conversations. What are in market uh, snow tracks are going <laughs> to guess on what we were up to? And it was right up the end. Didn't get it. <laughs> the question everybody is asking is, when are we going to see another cooperatively developed snowmobile? Basically, what you're going to see in the future um, from our, uh, our relationship, we've been working on for well over five years. And now we have new processes. Uh, we have relationships that uh, we're benefiting from and you're going to see it in the product that uh, we're producing in the future. And uh, like I said, you're going to be surprised you haven't seen anything yet. And I think onto that, Pete, you triggered something. It's going to be part of what we learned together. Um, we talked about Articat speed to market and Yamaha fit, finish and quality. I think what you're going to see is we've been able to kind of pull that together and accelerate so speed to market to keep that going as well as fit, finish, and quality, and uh, we're excited. This deal is a big deal in the snowmo biz. So what did it take to make it happen? You know, behind the scenes, you're taking two complete different companies with different cultures, different backgrounds, different languages, and we're forming a relationship to produce a single model going forward. 
uh, that was a lot of work. You imagine you know, taking part systems. Yamaha's part systems is nothing like Articat's. We had to form that link. So rather than us adapting to Articat and Articat re adapting to our system, we actually built a system that we both can connect into. And that's parts, service, engineering, communication. So in the process, there is a lot of people behind the scenes who were involved that moved a big mountain of work. You had hundreds of people on our team, hundreds of people on their team, and we're all pulling this all together. And, and we have to thank the group for that. I think that none of this would have been possible. It's not Peter I. This is actually our both of our companies pulling together to make a better snowmobile. And in the end, our consumers get one of the best snowmobiles that's ever going to be made. Well said. Can this groundbreaking, revolutionary relationship last long term? We talked a little bit about the short-term relationship. I think what you saw in the short-term relationship is what you're going to see in the long-term relationship. You're going to see two companies continue to work together and to different than maybe we originally started, engine chassis. I think, again, you're going back, you're going to bring two companies that are going to come together even closer together and bring out uh, the best snowmills that this industry has ever seen. I think you see the products that we've produced in the last three years. You know, each year, we're expanding the line. We're addressing the needs and the niches in the market. We'll continue to do that, but in the long term, you haven't seen anything yet. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Snowmobile in Quebec. Experience a ride you'll never forget. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. For 2016, I'm pretty excited about this snowmobile. It's an SKS, and it's my project for this season. While it needs absolutely nothing to make it an awesome off-trail shredder, I do want to add my own personalized touch as well as increase the functionality with a few helpful parts. The SKS is what I describe as a mountain crossover. It'll climb like a mountain goat but doesn't mind the flat trail to get to the deep powder either. Thanks to a bulkhead cooler and added wheels in the skid frame, we have more than enough cooling capacity to keep us cruising the flatlands. And with the 155 by 2.4 inch lug track, we have all the capability when the snow gets deep and I want to play in the powder. This SKS is the fully tricked out version right from the factory. I mean, it comes in beautiful orange and black and looks great, but I have a few accessories that I want to put on to tailor it to my riding style as well as make it unique for me. The powder track boards that come stock are incredibly good at clearing snow and giving excellent grip, but they were powder coated the same orange color as the tunnel and I want to be unique. Pure Polaris offers powder track boards in many colors and I wanted mine in black to carry the orange and black theme. With a few simple rivets removed, the boards come off. Reinstallation is just as easy. Line it up, start riveting, and within a few minutes you're done. But the sled now looks different from everyone else's. While I'm back here at the rear skid, I gotta take the time to add ice scratchers. Yes, the SKS does have extra wheels in the skid and it does have a bulkhead cooler, but more lubrication on these sliders is never a bad idea. These ice scratchers are available from your Polaris dealership and bolt on pretty simply. Here in the flatlands, we aren't used to using ice scratchers, but truth is, many days we could use them when it's icy or the snow is skinny. It helps to lubricate your slide rails and also helps reduce engine temps. It's just good all the way around. While ice scratchers are a great investment to help save your slide rails from any excess wear, putting a skid plate on your sled if it's off trail use is also a very wise investment and money well spent to keep the underside of your sled safe and protected. Again with the black, Polaris offers this skid in multiple colors. It's a simple install and will add protection to the belly pan area of your RMK or access platform. If you're off trail, this is a must as the potential for belly pan area damage is huge and something as simple as a piece of UHMW plastic could save your sled from thousands of dollars of damage. With protection from wear and potential damage both out of the way, we need to think about protection for the rider. And while that typically means using your head when you're riding, there's also a few parts we can add to make the ride more enjoyable. Wind protection is one of the keys. Seeing as the SKS is capable of traveling the trails, we want something more. I've opted for a mid-height flat black shield. It's not too tall that it'll get ripped off if I have to roll the sled over, but tall enough to block the wind. And hey, it looks great too. My final addition today is the Pure Polaris Dash Bag. It tucks nicely in the dash of the RMK and will hold everything from your wallet and phone to water and lunch or goggles, because being prepared is always a good idea. I like adding accessories to a sled, especially when it makes it look and function better. 
and this SKS will be spending most of its life off trail, which means that adding accessories that are both good for storage and protection, well, it's just money well spent. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. Last year's introduction of the all new Polaris Axis Rush with its 800 Liberty HO engine would have to be rated as an unqualified success. The sled delivered on the performance it promised and the nine new Axis models introduced were quite literally bulletproof. Some in the industry expected the intro of nine models to be way too much for any OE to bring to the market in one launch. Reliability quirks are something Polaris has voraciously worked to eliminate the past five years. The Axis proved their dedication to quality assembly and thorough validation was worth the effort and it paid off in model year 2015. We can't think of a more successful introduction of a completely new platform in the past decade. While reliability is high on any snowmobiler's purchase criteria, the promise of not just Me Too, but class-breaking performance from the new Liberty HO800 was part of first-year Axis hype. To say the engine delivered on the promise would be a gross understatement. This engine literally raised the bar in the 800 class. The Liberty 800's triple stage exhaust valves, two and a quarter pound lighter crank, and all new big gulp throttle bodies delivered what we suspect is horsepower in the mid 160 range. This imposing number is even more impressive in its delivery. The spread of power is even and torquey at trail speeds and flat out relentless past the C note. If there's more power to be found in an 800cc mill, we would like to know where it's hiding. The Axis chassis employed a deliberate, thorough, and intentional weight reduction program, which netted an impressive 35-pound slimming over the former ProRide chassis. This win-win reduction came with improved chassis stiffness and improved overall durability. Watching the Axis being assembled in Rozo last summer was a revelation. The front clip is assembled from castings, extruded aluminum, and carbon fiber. The old handle pull over structure, which pushed the ProRide center of gravity up, is gone, and a simplified K brace now serves as the rear shock mount. The Axis chassis is a remarkable accomplishment because it's not only lighter, it's way stronger. So what about the Rush 120 Axis Pro S800? With the entire snowmo biz moving to a 129 inch base track length, did Polaris miss out, staying with the traditional 120 inch footprint? Every one of our test riders agreed the Rush Axis 120 is among their favorite rides. Why? Because it's so light, lithe, and nimble. With a 125 inch lug, the Pro S launches with authority, throwing the skis in the air while running whoops nose high with a motorcyclish, throttle controlled front end posture. Honestly, we were surprised by the ride quality of the Rush compared to the Switchback 137. In the former ProRide chassis, the Switchback was clearly the ride quality leader. However, the Axis Pro S Rush has set the bar high for big bump and trail chatter compliance in widely varying terrain. No evaluation of the Axis can be credible without paying homage to Polaris now legendary variable caster double A-arm IFS. This geometric handling miracle has tangibly benefited from the Axis lower center of gravity produced by the engine's new cast motor mount system. Let's say it clearly, this is the handling standard all others must be judged by. The Axis brings a plethora of new features to the sport. However, there is one feature which changes the rules, sets a new standard, and we predict will soon be copied. It's the Axis amazing LED headlight. It is powerful enough to change the way you'll feel about night riding. We should also mention the Axis available 5-inch LCD instrument cluster, which includes full-on GPS that can position you precisely on the North American snowmobile trail map database. If that isn't enough, there's Bluetooth that'll pair with your smartphone to display incoming calls, which you can choose to ignore, unless of course they're from your significant other. One more idea you're sure to appreciate is the Axis easy to access engine bay, requiring less than 30 seconds to remove all external bodywork. So what's not to like? Here we go. 
The Axis Pro XC external shock rear skid is the only uncoupled trail skid in the business, and it is a blast to ride because it transfers so well. However, we think it could and should be more resistant to bottoming. The old Pro Ride external shock skid can in no way be compared to the new Pro XC. Pro XC eliminates 13 pounds of unsprung weight and is tangibly more compliant than plush in jigglers and rollers. The range of adjustability with Pro XC is vastly improved as well. The new 4-inch rearward mounted front torque arm improves flat tracking in turns and controls weight transfer to a very high degree, allowing the rider's body position to dramatically affect handling. Still, we would like to see more bottoming resistance. The Axis Rush Pro S800 is a solid hit in the 800 trail segment. This snowmobile is ridiculously fast, handles at the very top of this segment, and has features that are right now incomparable in the sport. So you may end up asking yourself exactly the same question we do. How do you one-up this snowmobile? Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Ontario Highlands, come wander. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.